and Heather Ford, this is National 9 News. The royal family in mourning. Princess Margaret dies in her sleep. Reward posted for Gold Coast Firebugs. Australia out of the Davis Cup. Good evening. Good evening. The Queen's younger sister, 71-year-old Princess Margaret, has died peacefully in her sleep after suffering her fourth stroke in three years. Renowned for her vitality, she was the original English Rose. But in recent years, the world watched as her health abandoned her. The start of a lonely journey for Princess Margaret. A hearse carrying her coffin, winding its way through the streets of London to her home at Kensington Palace. For only the second time, the first when Princess Diana died, the flag at Buckingham Palace flew at half-mast. And on the front gates hung a statement from the Queen, announcing to the world the death of her beloved sister. On Friday afternoon, Princess Margaret suffered a stroke. After developing heart problems during the night, she was taken to a London hospital. With her two children, Lord Linley and Lady Sarah Chatto at her bedside, the 71-year-old died peacefully in her sleep in the early hours of Saturday morning. The news sent Prince Charles to Sandringham to be with the Queen Mother, for whom this is a grievous blow. One of the, one of the fondest memories I shall have of her was uh, was of sitting at the piano, uh, playing away with a large, very elegant cigarette holder in her mouth. And uh, as I say, we shall all miss her Dreadfully. There could be no hiding her decline in health after a series of strokes. Her appearance in August at her mother's 101st birthday confirmed the worst. She was last seen in public two months ago looking no better. She lost so the quality of life really and she couldn't do the things she liked doing. Although her death was not unexpected, Margaret's passing has again led to a public outpouring of grief here. To many, she was the Diana of her day, a beauty whose life as a princess was often tainted by tragedy. She was a beautiful woman in her early years, really beautiful. So I think it's very sad. I think she had quite a sad life. Across the country, there were gestures of condolence. The Queen's Guard wore black armbands, while Prime Minister John Howard expressed sympathy on behalf of Australia. It's a sad event. She'd had bad health, and I certainly express on behalf of all Australians uh, my condolences to the Queen and to her mother. Princess Margaret's coffin will remain at her home for family and friends to pay their respects in private. Right. Later in the week, it'll be moved to the Queen's Chapel at St James Palace before the funeral at Windsor on Friday. Damien Ryan, National 9 News. She was a royal with a rebellious streak, but always remained fiercely loyal to her family and heritage. Princess Margaret may have lived like a glamorous Hollywood movie star, but somehow she seemed destined not to have a happy ending. She grew up in the shadow of a sister who would be queen. It was a life of royal privilege, but for Margaret Rose, it was also a constant struggle between pleasure and duty. When war broke out, the young princesses were sent to Windsor to escape the Blitz. In a rare interview, Margaret later told of her disappointment at not being able to help in the war effort like Elizabeth. I couldn't understand why the, the, the armed services didn't want the, the services of a, of a girl of 12. Margaret grew into a glamorous young woman, the toast of London society. She was surrounded by admirers, but when she fell in love, a personal tragedy began to unfold. Her suitor was a dashing RAF officer, Peter Townsend, a divorcee, 16 years her senior. The palace decided a marriage could never take place and Margaret had to choose, her love or her position as princess. Under incredible pressure, she made the heartbreaking decision. This is the BBC. The following personal message was issued from Clarence House by Princess Margaret about an hour ago. I would like it to be known that I have decided not to marry Group Captain Peter Townsend. Many feared Margaret would never recover emotionally, but five years later, she met a young society photographer, Anthony Armstrong Jones. He was a commoner, but this time no one stood in their way. They were married in 1960. 
Together they enjoyed a glittering lifestyle. Seen here on a Sydney beach, it seemed Margaret had found happiness. But it was not to last. Increasingly, the couple were spending time apart. The woman who had not been allowed to marry a divorcee had become one herself, the first royal to divorce in 400 years. Alone again, Princess Margaret was widely criticised for her lifestyle. She drank and smoked heavily. She conducted a six-year affair with Roddy Llewellyn, nearly 20 years her junior, but she was unrepentant, defending herself in a spirited radio interview. I think since the age of 17 I've been misreported and misrepresented. Whatever her perceived shortcomings, Margaret had a strong sense of duty. She was a patron of the arts, here visiting the Sydney Opera House, and a lover of ballet. She was devoted to her sister, and there was great pride in the achievements of her two children, Lord Linley, a successful furniture designer, and Lady Sarah Chatto. After a life lived in full, her final years were dogged with ill health and depression. The daughter of one queen, the sister of another. Margaret's life was blighted by sadness and disappointment. It seems she never found a role or a relationship that fulfilled her. Simon Boda, National 9 News. Buckingham Palace has confirmed the Queen's visit to Queensland will go ahead. The Queen and Prince Philip arrive on February 28 for a three-day visit to Cairns, Brisbane and Chogham on the Sunshine Coast. Flags will fly at half-mast on all government buildings on Friday.